Giving our Pro Senior Award, we give to those folks who look out for us older folks, whether it's the overspending that's done in the capital and other issues, whether it's the estate tax, getting rid of the death tax and other things. So it's an honor. I can't go to all the places, uh, not enough time or money, but occasionally you find a legislator that you say, boy, oh boy, this guy knows what it's all about, and especially when you follow a guy like Senior Bill Wampler, and I'm sure the junior Bill Wampler, but I remember Senior back in those days. He was a tiger. He, was a, he fought hard for, for the folks he represented. So I'd like to call Congressman Griffith up here, if you don't mind, Morgan, and receive our pro senior award. It's a real honor to be here with Congressman Griffith. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Well, thank you all. I, I am uh, very honored to receive this award and appreciate it. I will tell you that their leadership uh, keeps me advised on the issues that are important to seniors. And um, although I have to say, the last time we met, you actually had Pat Boone with you. Uh, but uh, they do uh, come by the office, and uh, we do keep in touch in Washington. And I appreciate their input because I need all the input I can get with all the different bills we have. I do read all the bills that I'm going to vote for. Now, if I'm totally against it, like if it's something that takes away our gun rights, then I don't have to read it. I know I'm against it from the get-go. But I try. <laughs> but I read all the bills uh, and do the best I can to understand them all. But there's a lot of cross-references and sometimes very confusing federal mumbo-jumbo. And I need folks like people at the 60-plus organization to say, okay, how does this affect you and what does this mumbo-jumbo mean? Because while I read it, and I'm a trained lawyer, but have you all ever read a federal bill? Some of them are very confusing. So I try to keep up, and they, they keep up on those issues. I'm going to take uh, two, two points from what you were talking about and expand on that. One, uh, Nancy Pelosi. What's really amazing is after the defeats of 2010, most political observers thought that the Democrat caucus in Washington would find new leadership. They did not. So if this November, Congress were to go back, to the House of Representatives were to go back to uh, Democrat control, Nancy Pelosi would once again be speaker, and we would have 2,700-page bills coming through with comments, and I'm going to paraphrase because I, I never get the phrasing exactly right, but Nancy Pelosi said on the PPACA, uh, Patient Protection Affordable Care Act, also known as Obamacare, you know, well, we got to get it passed, and then we'll read it and find out what's in it. Uh, you know, and again, I'm paraphrasing, but that's basically what she said. That leadership wants to come back, and uh, it's important to have folks out there who understand that's, you know, we can disagree on philosophy, but let's at least know what we're voting on before we vote on it. Second thing I would say to you is on the death tax. Uh, we have been out on what they call the August recess, and I've been working hard during that time period getting around the district, meeting with a lot of people. But before we left, we had an opportunity to vote on the so-called Bush-era tax cuts. Everybody's looking at this financial cliff that's coming up December 31st. Now, the Senate actually passed a bill. I know that that's surprising, but they actually passed a bill, and they sent it over to us, and it was the Democrat version, the President-supported Democrat version of which tax cuts they want to continue. We passed a bill and sent it over to the Senate that renewed all of the tax cuts for a period of time because we recognized the damage that tax increases on the American economy would have. And so we wanted to make sure that we sent a bill back that said all of them. Here's what's instructive. And I got this question the other night at a Farm Bureau meeting that I was at in Montgomery County. And the lady said, I own a farm and I'm concerned about the death tax because if you add up all the equipment and so forth, I'm not at the $5 million level, which is the level in the Bush era tax cuts or the Bush tax cuts, but I'm not sure my kids could take over my farm at the million dollar level. What's going to happen? And I said, well, it all depends on November 6th. And I looked at her, and it's one of, these, one of those times that the line just comes to you. And I said, you know, you hear the Democrats all the time talking about how we don't want to tax the millionaires. Those Republicans, those dastardly Republicans don't want to tax the millionaires. We're not for the middle class. And I said, understand when they say we're trying to protect the millionaires to this lady farmer. I said, 
they're talking about you. Because the death tax was not included in the Democrat version. The extension of that $5 million level as opposed to the $1 million level was not in the Democrat version that we voted on in late July, early August of this year, or that the Senate voted on and sent us. We sent it back a version that included it. But the Democrat version did not have an extension of the raising of the level on the death tax. Now, if they're willing to do that before an election, you can imagine what would happen after the election if they're in control of the Senate, the White House, and the House. They are going, or any one of those three, they are going to have the old levels on the death tax come back. And while it affected those farmers that were in that room that night, I always like to tell the story about Pillis Brothers Garage because they've been very concerned about this for years, and I'm sure they're doing some estate planning to try to get around it. But this is a small town garage that started back in the 40s or 50s in my hometown of Salem, Virginia. Happens to sit on a small lot, but it's on the corner of a busy street. A lot busier now than it was when they first opened it up, and that land's been paid for for a long time. But they've kept up with the modern times, and even though it's a classic old-style two-bay garage, they have all the diagnostic equipment. And they have a nice wrecker. And that business is worth more than a million dollars, not because it generates so much cash every year, not because they're fat cats trying to get rich and st stuffing money in their pockets, but because in order to do business, they have to have equipment at a location that makes everything cost more than a million dollars. And if they suddenly had to pay up to 55% to transfer that from one generation to the next, on everything over a million dollars, it's unlikely they could find the financing in the current regulatory scheme to borrow the money to pay the taxes. Family farms, small family businesses are going to have to be sold if we don't continue this. And I think if we don't continue the Bush era tax cut, and I would go a step further and think we ought to get rid of it altogether, but that's, but that just, just knowing that the Democrats cast their lot and their vote to take it back down to a million dollars. And while I would love to have a million dollars cash in my pocket, and I think every one of us would, that's what, pe that's what the Democrats want everybody to think about. They don't want them thinking about that small business that employs two or three family members and some other folks in the community. They don't want them thinking about the family farm that may not be that big, but when you start adding up the value of the land, particularly if it's close to a town or a city, and you start adding up the value of the equipment, next thing you know, on paper at least, you've crossed that threshold. And ladies and gentlemen, I believe in the defense of the family farm and the defense of small business and that I make a lot of my decisions based on how it will affect businesses and jobs and people in the 9th District of Virginia. And I appreciate you all being here today and I appreciate you all giving me an opportunity to speak to